today I am sharing style tips you've probably never heard before. These are things you've probably never heard before and maybe have never even thought of before, but they can be game changers when it comes to your style. Stay tuned. Hey, this is Netta. I'm so excited about the topic of today's video because I'm going to share style tips that I've never shared before that I think are going to give you a different perspective on things that you wear and, and use all the time. So if you're new here, my name is Netta. I am a personal stylist. I'm also the founder of the Ageless Style program where I've helped over 5,000 women learn to love their wardrobes and feel confident in what they wear and how they look every single day. I used to be a fashion editor and a fashion columnist and and now I enjoy and am passionate about sharing style information and style advice for you guys on YouTube. So if you're new here, welcome. I hope that you'll consider subscribing at the end of this video. Today, I'm so excited to be working with, I, I hope I'm saying it right, with Aulia. Um, Aulia is um, an eyewear brand. They reached out to me and um, look how cute their, their packaging is. Um, and this is something that is becoming increasingly important to me as I get older. I used to have 20-20 vision like most of my life. And the last couple of years, I was like, I'm just not seeing things. So I know most of you are already there. Maybe you're wearing readers. Maybe you're wearing full-on prescription glasses. I'm really excited to introduce you to this brand because the glasses are really, really high quality. They're affordable and they're stylish. So I can't wait to show you the pairs that I picked. Okay, this first pair, this is called the um, Venus Round Black Glasses. These are $76.95. These are kind of designer inspired. They are so, so fabulous. Um, um, they will, of course, put your own prescription in these glasses, but like, so cool. I love these glasses so much. So these are going to be one of the things that's going to lead us into our first style tip. Now, the second pair I want to share, these are just so, so fun. These are... Um, they're Lila round sunglasses. I got these in hot pink. I thought this would be so, so fun for outfit styling. But of course, for those of you who do not need a pair of hot pink sunglasses, they have black and they have all the other colors. These are $19.95. Love these. I think they're so much fun. And you, just by looking at them, they're so me. And then finally, I got these. Um, they're called, actually, yeah, the Lila sunglasses were 20. These are also 20. These are... Um, the hazel round red glasses now they say red but they're actually more like a deep pink mauvey pink color um these are so these are so cool i love these um and what i will say is that the quality of the 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 lenses themselves are excellent they're incredible these are really really nice quality glasses i got these in two times magnification because i'm thinking ahead i'm right now at like 1.5 readers but i was like I, 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 I might need a step up very soon. So I love those. I do have a code NETAM15 that will get you 15% off. There's also a link that the first three glasses in the link are my choices. And then you will see there are so many to choose from and the price points are really, really good. So like I said, two of those were $20 and the other one was more like $75, but they've got a wide range of styles. There's something for everybody. Um, you know, you can obviously get prescriptions and readers and sunglasses and all the things. So really, really excited to be working with Ewulia and it's gonna lead me to my very first tip. Now, the first tip is that the frame of your glasses is really, really important. And if you have high contrast coloring, I've done a whole video on are you low contrast or high contrast. The easiest way to know whether you've got high contrast coloring is to look at yourself in black and white. So maybe take a picture, a selfie of your face, um, you know, use the button on your phone to turn it into black and white, and then look at your contrast level. Is the difference between your hair and skin really high? If so, you've got a high contrast. I have high contrast. In black and white, you can tell that I've got very dark hair and relatively light skin for my hair. Obviously, there are people with darker hair and lighter skin, and they're even higher contrast than I am. But because of my high contrast, I look best in high contrast frames that, um, are solid colored. So for example, this frame, this this frame is a high contrast frame. So it contrasts with my face the way that my hair does, right? So it's got a black 
that you know black that contrasts against my skin tone and it is um, a solid color frame it is a solid black frame so for me as a high contrast person a high contrast frame it, that is a solid color because that solid color gives more contrast is going to be my best bet now if you have lower contrast if you've got like jennifer aniston soft coloring or your coloring is more muted and your tones on your skin hair and eyes are all closer together and in the same color family then you're going to look best in lower contrast frames with possibly like a speckled or um you know different variations in the color so the color is broken up as opposed to being solid. Maybe it's going to be like a light tortoise or a light leopard looking or just some kind of speckled pattern on the frame that's going to kind of echo the, the light tones or the, the softer tones and the, and the lower contrast that is in your coloring. So glasses are really, really important. And I've done videos on glasses. I can do another video on glasses, but they really not only offer an opportunity to express your personal style, obviously to fix whatever is going on with your eyes or to protect your eyes from the sun, but to echo your existing coloring so that you are that you look best in your in your glasses so if you really want to look your best in your glasses you want to echo the contrast level that you have and then you also want to pull a color for, for your basic like everyday pair of glasses your first pair of glasses your investment pair of glasses you want to pull a color from your coloring so that could be your eye color it could be your hair color in my case i pulled my hair color because i know that a black frame really has that impact on me that i want glasses to have if you've got blue eyes like pulling a color from your coloring into your glasses is going to be a way to just showcase a feature that you might love. So be really intentional about the color and also whether your glasses are solid or um, patterned in the, in the frame because that's going to make a big difference in how flattering your glasses are on your face. Okay, so that's the first style tip that you may have never even thought of. Um, glasses are important. They frame our eyes, they frame our faces, and, and we want them to look beautiful. Okay, next tip. Um, use the colors that describe your coloring to choose your makeup. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, if you're shopping for makeup online, it can be really overwhelming and really daunting. Fortunately, um, and I'm, I'll put up like just the way the Merit website does it. Merit is a brand I've worked with. I really, really love their makeup, but they do a really great job of illustrating the different um, cheek colors, lip colors, and even foundation colors on different skin tones so you can really see the color and make the best choice for yourself, especially, like I said, when shopping for makeup online. But even if you're shopping for a at a drugstore and you can't try everything on, how do you know if the color lipstick that you're looking at is the right color for you? So the way that you do this is by looking at the descriptor words for that color. So for example, if you've got warm coloring, you're going to look for warm words, words like burnt, like, um, like, you know, fall, like, um, toasted, like, um, rich. Those are going to be words. Those are signal words that indicate that the color that you're looking at may be warm. And often you'll even have just a description of the color, a warm soft coral and then you're going to know that it's a warmer lighter coral color and if you've got warm coloring you can ask yourself you know okay it says warm so this color is probably warm and so this color of lipstick is probably going to harmonize with my existing coloring now it's the same with um if you've got deep coloring you can look for colors like deep dark dramatic like um evening uh like they're just gonna have indicators in those colors that in, in the color names often that will give you an idea if the colors are darker if they're deeper if they're again you might see the word rich to refer to deep colors now if you have soft coloring then looking for words like muted faded dusty um soft those are going to be clues that the color of makeup that you're looking at might echo your own coloring and therefore is going to be a flattering choice um, if you are cool, you're going to want to look for words like icy and, um, and cool and frozen and frosted. Like those are all clue words that you're looking at a color of makeup that 
is going to harmonize with your existing coloring. So read the descriptions, like use all the tools at your disposal. When you're on a website for makeup or when you're at a drugstore looking for makeup, use every single tool at your disposal to get the best color um, on the first try, right? Because that's the goal. Most of us do not want to be returning makeup back and forth and that's a real pain. So looking for, and it's, it's true with clothing as well. Like if you're looking at um, the, a, a t-shirt and it says um, russet, um, it's probably going to be a warmer color. If it says, um, you know, ice blue, it's probably going to be a cooler color. So looking for those clue words when you're shopping for items and colors is really going to be a game changer. Um, okay, the next style tip that you've never heard of is that if you're looking for an outfit, it, it, because so often we can get hung up on what are my colors and what is my contrast and what silhouettes should I be wearing, and I will tell you there is one outfit one outfit, one type of outfit that looks good on everybody. Looks good on everybody. And this is an outfit with medium contrast because if you've got low contrast or high contrast, you can watch my video to see which you are. If you've got low contrast or high contrast or medium contrast, everyone can wear medium contrast. So when in doubt, a medium contrast outfit where the two colors are kind of close together in terms of lightness and darkness is going to work for everybody. A monochromatic outfit is also going to work for everybody. I have a whole video coming up on outfits that work for everybody. But a medium contrast outfit um, that is um, neutral, and navy is going to be the neutral that works on everybody. Navy works on everybody. It is one of the universal colors. So if you're looking for a medium contrast outfit that is, you know, shades of blue and that is tailored, not fitted and not flowy, that's going to be an outfit that's going to work for everybody. So when in doubt, go with blues because there's a version of blue for everybody. Go with medium contrast because medium contrast is going to work on all different contrast levels. And go for a tailored outfit that is not skin tight, not fitted, and not flowy because that in-between area, the tailored outfits that skim our body, that bring out the best in our bodies without overwhelming our bodies or sticking to our bodies, those are going to be the ones that we all need to be leaning into over 40, over 50. They are universally flattering. So when in doubt, go medium contrast, go tailored, go blue. Okay, this next tip is also related to coloring. I'm realizing that a lot of these are tied into the color category that you're in. I did a video on what to wear instead of black and, and kind of gave an overview of the color system that I use and the different types of color, you know, different types of color types. So if you have black hair or really dark, dark hair, um, and especially if you're in the clear color category, which means that you've got coloring that's very contrasted, dark hair, usually fair skin and bright eyes, do not highlight your hair. Do not highlight your hair if you're a clear. So examples of beautiful clear ladies include Angelina Jolie, um, Megan Fox, Elizabeth Taylor, and Angelina Jolie, the blackness of her hair and the solid one color of her hair is part of what makes that contrast so striking and so beautiful. So if you highlight hair that's black like that and you've got that high contrast look, you're going to diminish the high contrast beauty of your coloring. So if you've got, I, I really feel like if, you're, if your hair is in the medium range or a light range, then you can probably experiment a little bit more with hair color and go a little bit lighter, a little bit darker, um, play with the hair color a little bit more. But if you are, and, and apparently black hair is actually the most popular hair color in the world, black hair should stay black. Unless you're going to salt and pepper or silver or gray, um, black hair should stay black. Uh, it's just a beautiful, striking look. And sometimes I feel like, you know, God knows what he's doing. And if you're blessed with that striking high contrast coloring, play it up. Don't play it down by going darker or by, by highlighting your hair. Okay. Um, next tip that I want to talk about. This is something that we don't often think about. As we get older, we tend to have more texture in our skin. And so you want to pay attention to where you have texture in your skin and whether you're downplaying or highlighting the texture. So texture could include anything from, you know, like I have some, obviously some 
lines and discoloration on my skin but i also have you know a couple of scars from when i used to break out as a teenager so everybody has texture on their skin and as we get older the texture shows up a little bit more if you truly have glass skin and your skin is poreless and textureless then maybe you're going to skip over the step but for the rest of us recognizing that using something or wearing something that's very shiny and smooth right next to heavily textured skin will highlight the skin texture so for example if you have skin that is you know if you've got kind of deeper lines in your skin or a lot of texture in your skin and you're trying to downplay that um don't put like a shiny satin shirt or a really shiny almost mirrored or metallic looking earring right next to your skin texture because what that's going to do is going to it's going to highlight the texture of your skin so matching you know if you've got glass skin or very very smooth poreless skin then you can do shiny surfaces right next to your face all the time if you've got more textured skin consider more matte or more textured surfaces um, closer to your face just something to think about if you feel like you want you want to take it to the next level and maybe make your skin look a little bit smoother a little bit less textured then you can always go with with like a, a coarser material or a more nubby textured material close to your skin and your face will actually look a little bit smoother i know strange little trick but it actually works okay next tip is um don't let your earrings end at a part of your face or your jaw that you don't want to draw attention to so um you can tell i'm still getting over my cold but if an earring ends like i'm feeling like this area is quickly becoming a problem area for me so if an earring ends right at a part of your jaw where you don't want people to look just recognizing that wherever an item stops wherever we have a hem or wherever we have a stop of of anything that we're wearing that's pointing the eye in that direction you're going to see that part of your face or your body so putting something there may not be your best strategy so for example again if you're if you're not loving this part of your jaw don't have an earring that ends here if you're not loving this part of your neck don't have an earring that ends in line with that spot on your neck so you want to pay attention to where your your earrings are landing and how they're interacting with your um with your face and with your anatomy i've you know i've done videos on earrings and picking the right earring for your face shape and all of this so i'll try to link some of those but if you want to see a little bit more of an in-depth video on any of these topics let me know in the comments below and i'm happy to do a separate video on any of these but just wanted to kind of give an overview of some some tips and some strategies that i look for when i'm working with a client and and things that i use um every day as a personal stylist but i don't know that i've ever thought of talking about them before okay Along the lines of the earrings, long necklaces on big busts are problematic. They're problematic. A lot, like a really long necklace that that lands like um, between the bust line and like the belly button or the bust line and even the high hip or whatever. That's going to be really hard if you've got a really full bust. If you have a full bust, I I feel like your long necklace should end above the bust line um, because you do not want that tent effect of the necklace dangling off the edge of the bust because the bust is pulling it out right so just something to keep in mind we want to think about how our jewelry interacts with our body and our actual features our actual anatomy another thing is maybe not putting a choker on a neck that you don't want to highlight because a choker will absolutely highlight your neck and make it look more and kind of draw attention to it okay next thing is i talked about your version of white and your version of black in my um, what to wear instead of black video but i will say that although bright white looks beautiful on especially deep clear and light ladies i will say that you want to watch your whites because you want to pay attention to the whiteness of your teeth i was just talking to my sister a dentist who's reminding me that i need to wear my retainer again um but if your teeth are really naturally white then you can wear bright white more easily than if your teeth are naturally a little bit more ivory or a little bit more of a creamy white so you don't want your shirt which is right next to your face to be significantly whiter than your teeth or you're really going to see um the, the yellowness or the creaminess or the ivoriness of your teeth and they're not going to look as pearly white as you would like them to 
That said, we can all whiten our teeth. And I definitely recommend, this is not a, an ad or sponsored or anything, but Lumino tooth whitening strips are my favorites because I have very sensitive teeth. They're very sensitive to hot and cold. And although I think the Crest White strips work better than almost anything, Lumino in two uses gets you the same whitening effect that Crest in one use does, but it doesn't have hydrogen peroxide in it. They are all natural and they are not sensitizing to your teeth. So really a, a very quick and easy way to improve the way that you look is to whiten your teeth and to pay attention to the whiteness of your shirt as compared to the whiteness of your teeth. It's something to think about. Um, last tip, and this is more of a practical kind of tip. If you have, if you've, you know, the, the ladies in my closet confidence, we have been working on color palettes and figuring out what their, their personal colors are and their best colors and their color category, whether they're light or soft or clear or deep. And what I have done is I've isolated some of the cool colors from those color palettes for the ladies who are considering going gray. So that's my next tip. If you're considering letting your hair get salt and pepper or go full silver, full gray, full white, then I would encourage you now, if you're working on your wardrobe, if you're buying new items, if you're building a wardrobe, um, and if you're not in a warm color category, because warm ladies, should not wear cool colors or, or do not wear cool colors as well, but any other category of, of color type, start wearing the cooler colors and start buying the cooler colors from your color palette. Start transitioning your wardrobe to a cool color palette now, because if your hair goes white, silver, or gray, you're going to be in the cool color palette zone and you don't wanna go all in on rust if you know that in a couple of years or a couple of months, you're gonna be silver or white or gray because then you're gonna find that those colors are just not going to work as well for you. So if you are any color category other than warm, consider playing and, 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 and leaning into the cool side of your color palette now um, so that you know, when your hair gets gray or silver or white, you're already going to have a lot of those cool colors in your wardrobe. So think ahead. If you're investing in jewelry and you know, you know, you know, you know that you're letting your hair go silver or white or gray, you may want, and, and you like silver jewelry as well, you might want to go for the silver jewelry as opposed to the gold jewelry. Something to think about. You might you may want to choose charcoal as opposed to brown as, as a dark neutral for your wardrobe or navy as opposed to brown. Um, you may want to choose gray as opposed to camel. Like start thinking about um, your wardrobe long-term and, and creating those building blocks for your wardrobe and really starting with a color palette that's going to serve you now and in a couple of years. So. I hope that was helpful. I kind of threw out a lot at you and it was sort of all over the place. There were a lot of different tips, but again, if you want me to talk about any of these in more depth, let me know in the comments. I would love, love, love to cover these in a little bit more depth. Uh, this is the type of thing I love to talk about. I totally geek out over over these, these little tweaks that we can make to our appearance that will really help us look best. And, and I'm gonna go back to the beginning and really encourage encourage you to focus on frames for your glasses that bring out your best. People are going to see them all the time. They're going to see them all the time. And it's really, really important at the end of the day that this looks good because if this looks good, everything else kind of comes together. We know that if we go out in a gown and our hair and makeup is a mess, we're not going to feel great. But if we go out in athleisure and our hair and makeup and glasses and all of that look really cute, we're still going to look really good and we're still going to feel really good. So thank you to Eulia for working with me on today's video. Netta M15 is my code. I will pop it up. Lots and lots of great glasses options. If you want help, picking glasses that are gonna suit you, um, just share in the comments and maybe we can go back and forth and help you pick a pair of Aulia uh, frames that are gonna work the best for you. So um, love you guys. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give this video a like if you liked it. Don't forget to comment. Um, and of course, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already so we can keep hanging out. I have a lot more coming in store for you in 2024 and I'd love to um, stay connected with you on YouTube. So love you guys. I'll see you in the next video.